Good afternoon, everyone. It's fantastic to be here. Sean Martin is my name. Um, I'm the Chief Investment Officer of Solaris Investment Management, and I wanted to talk today on how to add value from shorting equities. Um, we at Solaris uh, recently relaunched our successful long short uh, product, our 13030, and so I thought it was a really good time to have a chat about what is a really misunderstood area of the market. Um, for centuries, it's been blamed for all the problems in the markets, shorting. Uh, from the 1720 crash in, uh, in France, I actually read yesterday, um, blamed it on shorters. Um, so there is indeed a lot of misinformation about shorting out there. So hopefully I'll uh, go some way to absolving you of the, uh, of the myths that surround the shorting world. So let's hop into it. Um, we like to break down the shorting world into these three categories. And the reason is that the biggest myth we find in shorts and was indeed the uh, prompting of that comment in 1720, um, is that you have to go chasing big train wreck shorts to win in this space. And unless you take on and find the next Slater and Gordon, you have indeed failed as a shorter. Um, it's actually quite the opposite. Uh, we find that um, if you bucket um, shorts into categories like this, two-thirds, and I'll go through each of these categories in some more detail, but two-thirds of the categories up there have much, much lower hurdles for success as shorting. And we're talking about shorts here in the context of a long-short fund. So you have the luxury of uh, taking the capital from the short and reinvesting it in your longs. And, and with that in mind, you can be a lot more um, uh, forgiving in what you need out of your short. You don't need to take the risks that uh, some believe are uh, ever present in, in the shorting world. And uh, accordingly, the alpha streams available to you as a shorter uh, are far more attainable. So that said, let's start with the outright shorts. What do we want to see in a traditional short, the stereotypical short that you'd be more familiar with? Um, we want them to fall outright. Uh, we, we would usually have them um, failing one or many of our screens at Solaris. Um, financial screen in particular um, over debt burdened companies are a great way, to use uh, Jacob's um, phrase, to reduce the margin of error, margin of safety in your business. Um, but ESG screens, geopolitical screens, litigation screens, usually you'd have earnings risk and usually they would be overvalued. There's a couple of examples up there of shorts that we've had a bit of success with recently. Um, but focus in particular is worth focusing on. Um, when a short starts to work, when an outright short starts to fall, you need to be very, very careful. The problem with the outright short is they become all too common, all too frequent, and the shorting um, percentage of the register increases dramatically, um, and the short squeeze probability increases um, with the same correlation. We, we found with Vocus, um, it fell out of bed out of, uh, after uh, multiple um, earnings downgrades from uh, one too many mergers. Um, uh, but at the bottom, we found enormous takeover interest and suddenly there was a short squeeze on that actually saw on Friday, I think, the fifth suitor put their hand up. There's an MBO, multiple private equity interest. So as a shorter, when you're in this outright short space, you have to be very, very aware that you're not in what's called a crowded short and that you don't have too many friends down the bottom. That's why we find it a pretty risky part of the market to short. We'll always have this as part of our short universe, but it can't be the exclusive part because otherwise you get caught in these uh, short squeezes. Takeovers, um, um, uh, uh, equity raisings, um, where you actually get your short stock called back. Um, um, they're all disasters for the shorter. So how do we mitigate this risk? How do we, do, we, do we bucket the short so that we can better able deliver an alpha stream of consistency from our short portfolios? Funding shorts. Uh, I suppose a better word for funding short might be a boring short. Um, the only um, a hurdle for the funding short is that we want it to underperform our conviction longs. We don't want it to crash. It might even go up in value. Um, as long as it doesn't go up as much as the conviction longs. It may be overvalued, but it's more likely to be fair value. Um, and it can form a really, really large chunk of your short portfolio. It can anchor the portfolio. Indeed, um, the, the structural headwinds, it's not management's fault, the Coca-Cola Coca Amatil, they didn't invent the formula for Coca-Cola. They are always beholden to Atlanta for the larger part of the ROE in the chain of Coca-Cola. They made a relatively um, ill-advised expansion in Indonesia that hasn't gone well, 
and they play against a, a really brutal supply chain, which only yesterday uh, Woolworths pulled uh, three out of five of their Mount Franklin products and replaced them with um, home brand products. So there's some real structural headwinds that are, that, that are taking Coca-Cola Amstel on. And from a high teens multiple, we see it as a really, really nice long-term structural short for us. Um, that could be one of three or four stocks um, that, that, that would anchor the portfolio. Um, these, as I say, have lower turnover, more stable, and can give you a really, really sustained um, alpha stream from the shorts. In the same um, category, a pairs trading. I mean, you know, a long only um, analyst, you know, fund, sorry, a long only uh, uh, fund manager has a bunch of analysts who is doing this all day, every day. They don't actually put the short side on, but all day, every day, a sector analyst is actually going through a pairs trading process. What's the best stock in my sector? What's the worst stock? I'll go long the, the best stock. What we don't get to do as sector analysts is monetize the negative view, which is very frustrating. Um, it's really only the top 20 stocks in the index that have a weighting that is large enough um, to get any uh, relative performance. And obviously, there's no absolute performance if you don't go short. Um, so pairs trading is a fantastic way, again, to increase the size of your short exposure of the alpha streams that are coming from your short strategies without taking a whole heap of risk. Um, usually, they're of the same industry often homogenous, but they've been uh, mispriced relative to each other. The example on the bottom there, two gold stocks, we're not taking a big position in gold um, at all. Um, we don't really have usually large positions um, on macro calls, on commodities, on, on currencies. Um, but here we have a pretty simple, well-run, clean WA gold mine being paired against uh, a pretty troubled West African, Ga Gardner, the term of <laughs> Ghanese, a Ghana, um, gold mine in Perseus mining that's had a lot of ESG difficulties. And that um, pairs trade, we would expect to work well whether the gold price goes up or down. Um, again, it's another way for us to garner without, no pun intended, no uh, 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 increase in risk, a uh, alpha stream from shorts. So, so if I were to summarise how we get this, we get a risk management benefit from putting in buckets like this, and we get multiple alpha streams from our shorts. And it wasn't always like this. Most, most things in life that, that go all right have to come at a bit of a cost. When we started this product more than 10 years ago, um, we had to wear a few scars on our back. We, we, we did what most people did. We just chased the outright shorts, and we did it pretty badly, um, and came a cropper, chasing these really big train wrecks, the, the, the high-risk short and uh, weren't really getting anywhere. It, was, it wasn't until we actually broke it down into these buckets that we started to get a product that was sustainably outperforming. And since that point, about two years in, um, eight years ago, we've, we've done about 450 base points um, over per annum. Um, but it was really this categorization that set the ball rolling to, to run this product more efficiently. So what else can I tell you about uh, shorting? Um, outside of the schadenfreude joy of watching stocks go down when you've uh, put a bet on. Um, short the tail. The, the Australian market, um, it is true that the small caps have outperformed long ca uh, large caps for the better part of 20 years in this country, but it's not the entire small cap market, as Marcus will attest. The worst uh, uh, performance of the four groups of 50 in the 200, by some margin, is the smallest 50. Um, the, the best performance is in the 100 to 150. Um, hence, small caps have outperformed large caps, but not from this bucket. This bucket has actually had atrocious performance. You can see there, if you've got good eyesight, that you're ranging from negative 60 to negative 220% over 17 years in relative performance from this bucket. And the answer is a pretty simple one. S&P only lets you um, um, into the ASX 200 at an average inclusion of 154 by market cap. So they won't let you in when you get in at 199. You've got to prove your worth. And you've actually got to prove it by some margin. Um, what happens to the ones below 154? Well, to be frank, they just keep underperforming out of the index. And large cap um, managers often know these stocks really well. They're stocks that they have watched underperform decade after decade. Um, but they don't get to monetize that negative view. So short the tail. This is a fantastic group of stocks for us to target as, a, um, as an audience from which we can generate um, alpha in the short portfolio. 
One of those in particular, I'll, I'll briefly mention, 10 Network, that we've had a bit of success with shorting. Um, you can see in the top, um, top left of the screen there how badly the earnings has, have, have done over many, many years. That's not something new to you, free-to-air TV is um, um, plagued with operating headwinds. But when operating headwinds combine with the inspired decision by the 10 board to throw a whole heap of debt at the balance sheet, it's disastrous. And uh, Channel 10, in stark contrast to, to Channel 7 and Channel 9, have way too much debt. They fail our financial screen at Solaris. And again, when you have operating headwinds combined with um, um, an overburdensome debt um, on your balance sheet, you have a, a fantastic opportunity to short. And, and I wanted to highlight this um, on the basis that all of your screens that you run, the stocks that fail those screens, they are a fantastic target audience for shorting. Um, you just inverse those. Those that, that fail are obviously the long candidates. Those that, um, uh, sorry, those that, that, that don't fail are your long candidates. Those that fail are your short candidates. And 10 was a great case in point. The, the other thing is that we've never really been able to monetize our negative view on 10. We've been negative 10 for more than 10 years. It hasn't been close to making our portfolio, but we didn't ever get a chance to monetize it. It's extremely satisfying, again, notwithstanding a little bit schadenfreude, to uh, monetize your negative view when you get the short right. So shorting's good fun. Uh, in summary, there's three types of shorting buckets that we use to maximize the alpha streams and to minimize the risk management of shorting. We look to sh the small stocks of the ASX 200, shorting the tail, and shorting the stocks that fail our financial our, our screens as target markets for shorts. And, and finally, hopefully, more than anything, I've been able to uh, impart on you that you can risk managingly sustainably um, add alpha to a low return environment from shorting.